Every man of a certain age falls into one of three distinct categories. As a teenager, he either played Dungeons and Dragons, he knew someone who played Dungeons and Dragons, or he frequently beat up someone who played Dungeons and Dragons. I was in the first category. Most weekends and many weeknights, I sat around a table with six or seven other guys throwing oddly shaped dice that ranged from four-sided pyramids to what was supposedly a hundred-sided die, but which was really a golf ball with numbers on it. Dungeons and Dragons can now be played online. It's become yet another computer game. And aside from name recognition, I don't think it's got that much that distinguishes it from similar computer games. It's not that I have anything against them. I'd be lying if I said I didn't waste more time than I should playing computer games. But, as an old D&D player, I think turning it into a computer game misses the whole point of the original game. In the original, the rules weren't really rules so much as guidelines. Any good dungeon master knew that even if a group got into a really dire situation, killing off the entire party would, well, kill the party. Even killing one's pl one player's character could be a real bummer, even if it was an effective way of getting rid of somebody who got on everybody else's nerves. Computers aren't forgiving. Computers don't recognize when the rules need to be bent or thrown out completely. And D&D was inherently social because any game required a minimum of two people. The stereotype of D&D players is that they're overweight, greasy-haired, friendless, socially maladjusted dorks who live in a perpetual adolescent fantasy world because they're unable to cope with reality. Well, we weren't all overweight. We weren't friendless or socially maladjusted. And we had friends. We had each other. Okay, we spent entirely too much time debating whether a fireball spell would kill an 8th level paladin, but that was the whole point. Even when we got on each other's nerves, we still sat next to each other and our lives intersected in ways that couldn't be shut off with a switch. Even though most of what we did was play a silly game, the relationships we built around dining room tables led us to do other things with each other, like going to movies, or occasionally, believe it or not, playing sports. I wish I could say it was like those movies or those dramatic TV shows where a close-knit group of kids shares some horrible tragedy that unites them all in lifelong friendship and shared memories that one of them goes on to write a best-selling book about. Or there's some crisis that magically resolves itself in the last three minutes, followed by a montage set to music. On second thought, I'm glad nothing like that did happen. Tragedy makes great entertainment, but lousy living. The most dramatic thing that ever happened was, right when we had a troll surrounded, someone's mother came in and said, Would you boys care for some spinach quiche? And the real drama is that one of my friends ate that entire spinach quiche by himself. In college, I learned that writing about that kind of thing is called slice of life, which is a literary way of saying a boring waste of time. We had a lot of good times, but unfortunately, they were mostly the you-had-to-be-there type of good times and just being there wouldn't be good enough. You'd have to be there, be sleep-deprived, and stuck upon caffeine and of a particular mindset to fall all over yourself laughing about 16th century French pole arms. And believe me, they were funny. To this day, I still get a fit of giggles whenever someone says Fouchard or Beck du Corbin. Fortunately, that doesn't happen often. There was also the competitive side of D&D, &D, the part that really fired up our imaginations. Occasionally, we'd go to conventions and play tournament games where each player would be given a character with pages of detailed personality traits and would be judged on how well we could portray that character. There are people who do that for a living. They're called actors, although most actors have it easy because they don't have to write their own lines in between fighting giant purple worms with 20-sided dice. Fortunately, there were no Lee Strasbergs among us, so no one got impaled with a Beck de Corbin. I always thought of myself as a Stanislavski, but the truth is... I was the token guy who had no clue what was going on. Okay, technically, the cliché that every group of individuals has its token members, the one serious member, the one joker, the one jerk, the one jack wacko, and one plain and normal person, has never been true in my experience. We were all jokers, and we were all occasionally jerks, and we were all a little wacko, and there's nobody in this world who's really normal, because being normal is, well, abnormal. I was also the insomniac. When all the caffeine and the thrill of slaying a red dragon in its lair had worn off and everyone else fell asleep, I stayed up watching late-night movies on cable, partly for the nudity, but also because I couldn't sleep and there wasn't much else for me to do. I remember one morning there was a light rain. Light rain in the pre-dawn is always depressing, regardless of your circumstances. 
If you won the lottery the day before and woke up to an early morning drizzle, you'd be somber. You'd sit contemplating the fact that even if all that money solved your current problems, it was going to bring a whole new set of problems. Everyone around me woke up and started to head home. I was out in the driveway directing their cars, making sure no one backed into the wall or drove through the neighbor's yard. If our lives were part of a movie or dramatic television show, this would be the montage set to music moment, usually following some terrible event and a revelation of epic proportions. There was nothing epic about it, but that morning was the first time I realized that these friendships wouldn't last, that for three or four years, Dungeons and Dragons brought us together, but it wouldn't keep us together. We were going off in different directions, to different lives, but at least we'd shared that time with each other in a way that pixels on a computer screen could never have allowed, especially the spinach quiche. 